says, see Thomas, you believe because you have seen it. But blessed be those that believe and they haven't seen it yet. Blessed be those that believe and they haven't seen it yet. Oh, it's easy to see it and believe it. How many just know it and believe it? Now, now I don't know what else was discussed in the room after that. Uh, but it seemed like somebody would have asked Jesus what was it like on the cross? Jesus, when you were hanging there, what was it like? What was it like, Jesus, to be there and to be ridiculed for, for that amount of time and people looking at you, the ones you love, are, are struggling with your situation? How? What was it like, Jesus? But I believe Jesus would have said, don't worry, because I'm all right now. Mm. I believe Jesus would have said, don't worry, Thomas. Don't worry, Peter, because I'm all right now. See, see, I'm all right now is a phrase I wonder if anybody in here can say, I'm all right now. I wonder is there anybody here that has a, an I'm all right now praise? Is there anybody here who can say, you know what? I've had some burdens, but I'm all right now. Oh, I've had some circumstances in my life, but I'm all right now. Oh, I've had some disappointments, but I'm all right now. Oh, you know what? I got some enemies, but I'm all right now.
You might have nails in your hands. You might have spikes in your feet. But you know what? You're going to be all right. As long as you keep the faith, you're going to be all right. As long as you keep praying, you're going to be all right. As long as you keep praising, you're going to be all right. As long as you keep worshiping, you're going to be all right. I'll let you know I'm going to be all right. Because no weapon formed against me shall prosper. My God said it, and I believe it. And even though I can't see it yet, I know I'm going to be all right. Come on right now. Come on right now. Tell your neighbor, say, this is my season. And I'm going to be all right. And they were more expensive because, because see, y'all, you young folk, you're too young to know. You don't understand because we used to go right to shop right and get our sneakers. Two ninety nine. They'd be in a big trough of sneakers, and it wasn't no whole bunch of colors. You either got white or black. That was it. Yeah. And, and, and two ninety nine, you get your pair of sneakers. And I beg, beg, beg for Converse All-Stars because they were $10. And my father said, I can't, well, I could buy you four pairs of sneakers for that. <laughs> but I begged hard enough that he got me the Converse Chuck Taylors. And they were so, they were so, can I get a, can I get a towel or something? And, and they were so, uh, uh, you know, hot and so good, I ain't even wear them. I just brought them to school with me. Kept them in the box. And put them on top of my books, you know. And I put them on for Jim, and then I took them off when Jim was over. And I remember my bully, his name was, his name was James Campbell. I'll never forget him. I hope, I hope he ain't here today. <laughs> But if he is, he can witness. And I had my Converse Chuck Taylor All-Stars in the box with my books. And we were coming home. We had to go through a little path. It was a bunch of us. And so I was scared of this boy. He said, he said, you think you something because you got them Chuck Taylors. Boy, you ain't nothing. I said, yeah, you right. 
said, what? He said, you know what? I would have punched you in the mouth. I said, nah, you probably shouldn't do that. That, that wouldn't be nice. So he said, give me them Chuck Taylors. I said, I can't give you my Chuck Taylors. <laughs> my, my daddy bought these in and he ain't gonna be happy because I had to convince him that they last longer than other sneakers. <laughs> so if I don't come home with them the first day that I got them, I know what's gonna happen. So James Campbell punched me right in the mouth. Bow! Bust my lip. But let me tell you something. It's something about seeing your own blood. It's something about seeing your own blood that'll give you strength that you didn't know you had. <laughs> so when, when he punched me in my mouth and I, oh, wait a minute. I put them Chuck Taylors and them books down and I couldn't box, but I sure could wrestle. I wrestled them down to the ground and went to wailing on them. And after they pulled me off them, Me and him was best friends after that. <laughs> but, 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 but see, that wasn't the end of the story because when I turned around, my Chuck Taylors was gone. So I had to go home to daddy without them Chuck Taylors. Woo wee! I was scared to death. Because the things that my father did to me, he'd been locked up and put under the jail. If you do that to kids today. So, I go home, and I didn't know, I, I was trying to think of a good lie to tell my father about how, how I could, you know, justify not having them sneakers. And I went home, my grandmother was dead. My grandma said, bro, who bust your lip? And I, and I told her the story. I said, Daddy gonna kill me. She said, No, he not. He said, You tell him what happened. You, get home. you tell him what happened. So when my father got home, see, my lip was busted. He said, Boy, what happened to you? And I told him what happened. He said, Oh, yeah? He said, What happened to him? I said, Well, he had a bloody nose and a black eye. <laughs> my daddy said, All right, let's go get you some more Chuck Taylor. <laughs> Because sometimes you gotta go through something and you gotta bear a scar. Sometimes the devil will bust your lip. But if you don't quit and you don't give up and you fight back, you can bust his nose, black his eye, stomp his feet, step on him, and do everything else. As long as you have Jesus on your side, you will get the victory. the victory. Praise God, the doors of the church are open.